So we've walked through parts of the Via Dolorosa. Um, it's tough to imagine, but if you were to come here 2,000 years ago, what you would see behind me was just a hill with a quarry behind it. Okay, we were outside of the old city. So Jesus drags the cross up to the top of this hill, okay? And behind me, which is today the Church of the Holy Sepulcher, is the top of the hill. So if you look at this gray dome um, over to my left where I'm pointing is the very top of Golgotha, or the Hill of the Skull. Protestants call it cavalry, where Jesus is stripped of his remaining garments. The cross is laid down at the top of the hill. He's nailed to the cross. The cross is erected. Um, he's nailed to the cross at, with two thieves, one on each side of him. And a Roman centurion has mercy on him, puts him out of his misery by, by stabbing him in the uh, ribs. His body is brought down to station number 13, where it's prepared for burial. And he's buried in station 14 in the tomb of Joseph of Arimathea, a new tomb. And we're gonna check out all of the Stations of the Cross, Stations 9 through 14. at station 12 where the cross was erected after Jesus is nailed to the cross um, he's suffering on the cross and when the Roman puts him out of misery by stabbing him in the rib it's written in the New Testament that there's an earthquake and that the curtain of the temple tears and bleeds and in the earthquake the the earth opens up and if you look at the rock just adjacent to where Jesus was crucified, you can see a crack. And it's said that Jesus's blood goes into the crack all the way to the tomb of Adam and cleanses humanity of original sin. That Jesus dies for all the sins of all people, of all humanity. And they see this as being uh, the beginning of the messianic age. Of course, Jesus has to return to bring heaven down to earth. Okay, so what you're looking at now is a depiction of the story. Jesus is taken to the top of Golgotha, the hill of the skull. You can see the skull beneath Jesus' cross. Um, he's taken down and he's taken to the 13th station of the cross, which is on the middle of this mosaic, to the unction stone where the uh, Mary and the daughters of Jerusalem prepare his body for burial. They wrap him in a shroud and then they put him in a new cut tomb that was originally for Joseph of Arimathea, but he turns it over to Jesus. And behind me here, you can see the 13th stone of unction, where according to tradition, Jesus's body is prepared for burial. So here we are at the 14th station of the cross. If you were to come here 2,000 years ago, you would just find a rock with a hole in the rock was a tomb. All around this area it was a quarry with lots of second temple period Jewish tombs here. According to tradition, Constantine's mother, Helena, came here in the fourth century 
She saw that there was a pagan temple here. She ordered the pagan temple to be peeled away. As they peeled it away, she had a vision that this was the spot where Jesus was buried and resurrected. And she built an edicule, a, a tomb over the spot, similar to the one we're looking at now. That building has been built and destroyed and built and destroyed. I, I think this one only dates to the 18th or, or, or early 19th century. Um, but recently, National Ge Geographic Channel was allowed to go inside while they were doing uh, some cleaning of the tomb, and they did find a first century CE um, uh, uh, limestone slab that lines up with archaeology that there is probably a first uh, century Jewish tomb in this spot. So here we are at the tomb of maybe Joseph of Arimathea. You know, according to scripture, Joseph of Arimathea gave his new cut tomb to Jesus for burial, and tradition says that it's out there. Um, maybe this is it, maybe it's somewhere else in this area. We don't really know. There are a lot of tombs in this area, and it could be any one of them, but what we do know is this is a second temple period tomb. There's a niche here on the floor for uh, a stone to be rolled to close the door. Now, it's not a big boulder that we were, it's more like a, a wheel that's made of stone, like in, like an olive press, if you've ever seen an olive press. And according to scripture, the stone was rolled away when Mary and Mary Magdalena came to uh, address the body of Jesus. They find that the stone was rolled away and they go into the tomb. And this is, the, the tomb would have looked exactly like this. You can see in the far corner of the tomb, there's a niche for a body, and that's what Jews did. Jews would put the body in a niche, they would roll a stone in front of the tomb, they would come back nine months to a year later, they would roll away the tomb, they would collect the bones and put them in a bone box called an ossuary, then they would carve the name of the person on the bone box, on the ossuary, and put the ossuary back in the tomb and roll the stone back uh, in front of the mouth of the tomb. Today, Jews still do something similar this, to this day. Nine months to a year after someone dies, they come back and they put the headstone with the name of the person on there and they live, leave a little rock on the headstone which probably symbolizes the stone that they roll away from the tomb. So here we have several first century CE uh, Jewish tombs on the traditional site of Jesus' entombment and resurrection. So this church is Crusader period church. Okay, the original church built in the fourth century by Helena was destroyed and I believe it was uh, 1039 uh, by the Egyptian Arabs. Um, this actually is one of the reasons that the Crusades happen. The Crusaders come and they rebuild the church. They, they use a lot of uh, uh, the material that's lying around. For instance, the pillars that we've seen were cut in half and used in the rotunda. Here we can see classic Gothic archi architecture. Now, over the years, a lot of the rooms have been walled off. This used to be open, but the Greek Orthodox Church has put these cinder block and cement walls up to separate themselves from the Catholics to my right and the Armenians uh, to the left. There's also an Ethiopian church here and a Coptic church here uh, and a Syrian Orthodox church here. There's six different uh, Christian sects and uh, sometimes they get into arguments about who controls which portion. The Greek Orthodox Church controls 80% of the church, um, and the status quo actually begins here, the laws of the status quo, that whichever sect, whatever they controlled at the time of the status quo is what they have controlled ever since. So 
here we are in the chapel of Adam. And what's interesting about this chapel is we're directly underneath the spot where Jesus was crucified. And if you look at the crack in the wall, you can see it's a little reddish. So according to Catholicism and, and Orthodoxy, uh, when Jesus dies, his blood drips into this crack after there was an earthquake that shook the world and the blood dripped down into the crack into the tomb of Adam and Eve and cleansed man of original sin. Mm -hmm.